Welcome to The Needle, your Division I college basketball podcast. I'm Jack Williams, owner and operator of D1CoachCorner.com, your source for college basketball news, rankings, and predictions. On this podcast, we present to you weekly conversations on D1 college basketball coaches and their teams. Don't forget to go right now on your computer, phone, or tablet and follow us on Twitter. This episode of The Needle is brought to you by D1CoachCorner.com, your source for Division I college basketball Thank you for tuning in to our 28th episode of The Needle. Again, my name is Jack Williams, owner and operator of D1CoachCorner.com, your source for college basketball news, rankings, and predictions. D1 Coach Corner is the number one source for college basketball preseason predictions and college basketball coach evaluations. The Needle College Basketball Podcast will bring to you 52 weeks of college basketball talk on topics dealing with Division I college basketball coaches and their teams. In this episode of The Needle, we'll be ranking the Big East Conference for the 2019 and 2020 season. And then we'll get into some college basketball news and our new coach impact segment of the show, which will highlight coaches who have recently taken over a team and has positively impacted that team as a result of him being there. If you like our show, go subscribe to our iTunes or YouTube channels. Let us continue to be your number one source for preseason college basketball predictions and college basketball coach evaluation. As a disclaimer, some teams are still in the midst of building and still have scholarships available left to fill. With that said, we may more than likely have to do an update before the start of the 2019-2020 season, and some ranking may change. Some schools still have scholarships left to spend. Butler, Creighton, DePaul, Marquette, Providence, and Villanova all have one scholarship left to fill. St. John's has two. Villanova is stacked and is waiting to make another run for the NCAA championship. Xavier has the right roster to bolster their way back up to the top of the Big East, as they've done for many years. Don't expect Providence to stay near the basement of the Big East for long. Seton Hall, Georgetown, and St. John's all finish in the middle of the Big East, but can they do it again? We shall see. With that said, here's how we rank the Big East for the 2019-2020 season. Coming in at number one is Villanova. With this roster, Villanova is ready to make another deep run into the NCAA tournament. Villanova is returning three starters from the 2018-2019 season in Colin Gillespie, Sadiq Bey, and Jermaine Samuels. But the rich keep getting richer. Villanova has added two top 25 freshmen to the roster for the 2019-2020 season and Brian Antoine and Jay Robinson Earl and two top 100 freshmen, Justin Moore and Eric Dixon. Brian Antoine is a beast. He's quick on his feet, explosive, and is a scoring machine. Jeremiah Robinson Earl also has game. The two of them on the floor together is going to be something to watch. This Villanova team is for real. My projected starting five for this team is Colin Gillespie, Brian Antoine, Sadiq Bey, Jermaine Samuels, and Jay Robinson Earl. Coming in at number two is Xavier. Xavier will be returning four out of five of their starters from the 2018-2019 season, which includes their top three scorers, Paul Scruggs, Najai Marshall, and Tariq Jones. On top of that, Xavier has the 24th best recruiting class in the nation coming in, according to 247sports.com. Ohio's transfer Jason Cotter should pay major dividends for this team if he plays this season. Xavier was one of the four teams in the Big East last season that was tied for third through sixth place. Xavier finished in the second round of the NIT in 2019. Xavier has the personnel this season to make a deep run into the NCAA tournament. Expect Xavier to compete for the top of the Big East. My projected starting five for this team is Quentin Gooden, Paul Scruggs, Najai Marshall, Tariq Jones, and Daniel Ramsey. Providence Flyers. Providence will get back all of their starters from the 2018-2019 season. This team gets stronger with the addition of UMass graduate transfer Lawan Pipkins who was the top scorer in his team in 2018-2019. Pipkins averaged 16 points, 4.9 rebounds, and a whopping 5.2 assists per game in his final season at UMass. Pippen was the third best point guard in the Atlantic 10 in 2018-2019. Expect scoring to increase with this team next season. My projected starting five for this team is Malik White, David Duke, A.J. Reeves, Alpha Diallo, and Nate Watson. 
coming in at number four is the Georgetown Hoyas. This is a Georgetown team that probably should have gone to the tournament last season. This team was the best at every category in the Big East except for defense. Georgetown was one of the worst defensive teams in the nation last season. They ranked dead last in the Big East and 321st in the nation in scoring defense. So they were absolutely the best in scoring offense and absolutely the worst in scoring defense. Hopefully, Georgetown will get better defensively with this new additions. Even though Georgetown lost several players after the 2018-2019 season, they will have their four main starters returning in James Akinjo, Mac McClung, Jamorco Pickens, and Josh LeBlanc. North Carolina's transfer, Omar Jert 7, will fill the void left by Jesse Govan, who graduated after this season. Expect this team to remain one of the best offensive teams in the nation and hope that they improve greatly in the defense category. Now our projected starting five for this team is James Akinjo, Mac McClung, Jamoko Pickens, Josh LeBlanc, and Omar Jert 7. Coming in at number five is Butler. Butler finished the second to last place in the Big East in 2018-2019. Part of this team's struggle was due to lack of ball movement and poor rebounding on both ends of the court. Butler should improve greatly in rebounding, however. With the additions of Valparaiso's graduate transfer Derek Smith and Milwaukee's transfer Bryce Knees, this is a great front court for the Bulldogs. Ball movement may continue to lack, but rebounding and second chance points should improve greatly for this team. My projected starting five for this team is Aaron Thompson, Kamar Baldwin, Sean McDermott, Bryce Knees, and Derek Smith. Coming in at number six is Marquette. I have some good and bad news about this team. The bad news is Marquette may have lost their chance of making something big happen last season. The good news is that the Golden Eagles will get back three out of five of their starters from the 2018-2019 season, which includes their top scorer, Marcus Howard. Marquette has added to the roster graduate transfer Jace Johnson from Utah and transfer Kobe McEwen from Utah State. McEwen was Utah State best scorer in 2017-2018. Both transfers will fill the void left by Sam Hauser and Joey Hauser. Both of the Hausers have transferred. Sam Hauser transferred to Virginia while Joey Hauser transferred to Michigan State. Marquette should continue the sets from the 2018-2019 season. Marquette came in second place in the Big East and finished only in the first round of the NCAA tournament in 2019. My projected starting five for this team is Marcus Howard, Sakar Anim, Jamal Crane, Theo Johnson, and Ed Morrow. Coming in at number seven are the Creighton Blue Jays. Creighton was the third highest scoring team in the Big East and the 54th highest scoring team in the nation last season. The Blue Jays have added another big scorer to the team and Denzel Mahoney, a transfer from Southeast Missouri State. Mahoney was the top scorer for SEMO in his final season there, averaging 19.3 points per game. Creighton is returning two of their top three scorers from the 2018-2019 season season, but the concern that I have for this team is depth in the front court. Will Jacob Epperson ever get healthy enough to play an entire season? Jacob Epperson only played in a total of 29 games in the last two seasons. This team is pretty small in the front court, therefore rebounding may suffer a little. My projected starting five for this team is Davion Mintz, Mitch Balak, Tyshawn Alexander, Denzel Mahoney, and Damian Jefferson. Coming in at number eight is Seton Hall. Seton Hall finished the 2018-19 season in third place in the Big East, higher than projected. This team will get back four out of five of their starters from the 2018-2019 season. But nothing much changes for this team. If the Pirates could find a way to play better defense, Seton Hall could move further into the NCAA tournament than they did in 2019. Seton Hall finished in the first round of the NCAA tournament in 2019, losing to Wofford, a mid-major team. With Michael Nazi gone from the starting lineup, Romero Gill should be expected to play a bigger role for this team. Gill played in 27 games last season and started in three. He averaged 2.3 points and 2.7 rebounds per game that season. My projected starting five for this team is Quincy McKnight, Miles Kale, Miles Powell, Sandro, however you pronounce that, and Romeo Gill. Coming in at number nine is St. John's. The opportunity for this team to do some great was last season when Shamari Pons and Justin Simmons were still part of the team. 
that 2018-2019 team had a chance to go further than they did in the tournament in 2019. However, they made it to the tournament. Fortunately, LJ Figueroa and Mustafa Heron are returning with their new pieces. St. John should remain competitive in the Big East. However, this team may struggle a little to get to the top of the Big East. My projected starting five for this team is Jonathan McGriffin, LJ Figueroa, Mustafa Heron, David Carrera, and Damian Sears. And at number 10 is DePaul. DePaul lost all three of their scores to graduation in Eli Kane, Femi Alujabi, and Max Strauss. That's about 46 points that DePaul will have to replace in order to stay competitive in the Big East. Fortunately, the team has added top 100 freshman Romeo Wing to the roster. Hopefully, he'll get help from Arkansas transfer Darian Hall and red shirt Jalen Coleman Lands, who was injured last season, and returning player Jalen Butts, who started in 13 games last season. If DePaul finishes in the basement of the Big East as predicted, Coach Dave Latell may more than likely find himself on the hot seat watch list come 2019-2020 season. And my projected starting five for this team is Devine Gage, Jalen coleman Lands, Paul Reed, Romero Weems, and Jalen Butts. And so much for that. Now for some college basketball news. On June 10, 2019, Coach Penny Hardaway added Cody Topper to his coaching staff as an assistant coach. Copper is the former assistant coach for the NBA's Phoenix Sun. On June 12, 2019, the Miami Hurricanes hired Bill Courtney as an assistant coach. Courtney has once worked on the Larinaga staff at Bowling Green and at George Mason. According to the Associated Press, at least six schools should face level one NCAA violations this year. The violations could affect recruiting for these teams next season. Coach Calipari signed a 10-year extension with Kentucky worth $86 million. That's a lot of bread. On June 14, 2019, Coach Don Berline was fired from Idaho following an investigation into NCAA violations. Some teams are so quick to fire their coaches. Now for our new coach impact segment. In this new Coach Impact segment, we'll be discussing coaches who have been head coaches of a particular Division I basketball team for no more than five years and who are on the upward trend towards taking that team to another level. This week's new Coach Impact highlights Xavier's head coach, Tavares Steele. Coach Steele has his Xavier team ready to compete for the top of the Big East again. Before becoming head coach of the team, Coach Steele spent 10 years on the coaching staff of Xavier. Coach Steele is in his second season with the team as head coach and is doing a wonderful job. If Xavier does as predicted, Coach Steele will be in line to win the Big East Coach of the Year by the end of the 2019-2020 season. And that concludes our show for this week. Join us next week at the same time and channel for new episodes. We'll be happy to take your questions and comments on our Twitter for our next episodes. Our Twitter handle is at D1 Coach Corner. That is at D1 Coach Corner. See you next week.